So I encourage people, I encourage people to not blindly follow the pastor. Amen? Otherwise you want to have ended up here, right? So I encourage you not to blindly follow your pastor. You need to check with the scriptures. So I'm going to give a teaching how you can prove Gene Kim's a heretic, all right? How to prove that I'm a heretic and you can unsubscribe online, right? I'm going to teach you how to do that, all right? Name me any guy who does that online. Now look at 1 Timothy chapter 5. But this is an important lesson I taught in Basic Doctrines uh, too, as well on how to deal with church leaders. It's very important. So I'm just giving a basic doctrine right here. This is not something deep. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 1. What does the Bible say? Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren. Okay, very important thing here. The Bible says we are supposed to submit to the pastor. There's no doubt about that. So we see that at the book of Peter. However, there has to be a balance here that even though we're supposed to submit under the pastor, we're supposed to follow him, we also got to realize that that pastor is human and he can sin. Amen. That pastor is human, he can actually Amen. teach something, he can teach heresy. Otherwise, there wouldn't be false prophets, right? If there weren't pastors who taught heresy. So you can't just blindly follow false pastors. So how do you deal with those kind of people? 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 1, it says to rebuke not an elder, but what? entreat him as a father. So the key is this, is that if the pastor messes up something where it's a major sin and heresy, the key is you first entreat him as you would do a father. See that? Because sometimes your father can make a mistake, right? But out of honor and respect, you don't just point your finger at him and slap him in the face, stuff like that. What you do is that you entreat him like he's a father, you respect him, and then you tell him what's wrong right there. So that's what you should be doing, is that how to deal with pastors. You know how you deal with pastors? I mean, we had some members here who came from the wrong churches, right? Did you go to your pastor and then call them a false prophet in front of his face? No, what did you guys do? You didn't rebuke, but what did you do? You entreated them, right? You took them aside, showed them some verses, dealt some, showed them the scriptures and all that, right? <clears throat> so that's the best thing to do. It's not rebuking. It's entreating. So I'll just give the King James English here, okay? Entreat here. Treat as a father. So you got to think that way, as a father. Here's another thing in order to come against the pastor. You got to realize that you're not the only one that thinks it's an issue. If, so the sign of mental illness, which unfortunately a lot of internet people do, is that they think that it's a big deal and it's a big issue. So then they trump and parade about it and try to get everybody to side with them. That's not how it should be. It should be something that's plainly evident that other people will plainly see it. So look at this one. <clears throat> We're going to look at 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 19. Against an elder receive not an accusation, right? But what? But before what? Two or three witnesses. See that? So what? It says witness, not someone you persuade and influence to join your side. A witness. In other words, the action of that pastor is so plain that the person can witness that and see it. That's why you're going to have two or three that are going to agree with you. That, yeah, the pastor is doing something wrong right there. See? So that's another thing that's very helpful is that in 1 Timothy 5.19, it's not rebuking. It's entreating as a father, but not only that, you're not the only witness, okay? If you're the only witness, there's something seriously wrong with you. It's a sign of mental illness. So you got to watch out for that one. So you're not the only witness that's making a big deal. Now here's another thing, is that the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety, all right? So a third thing is that it's a multitude. So what particular witnesses? Multitude of counselors. You know, if your counselors are people who don't go to church, are people who are just some blogger on the internet, if it's not a person who pastors a local church, who prays to God and reads the Bible often, and has learned how to deal with people and had experience, real life experience with dealing with people and dealing with heresy, 
because multitude of what? Counselors, counselors, okay? Then there is what? Safety. So who are your, so if you have dependable people, then you know that the pastor's wrong. That's why I can name out a false prophet over there and rebuke him. Why? Because I'm not the only one doing that, all right? There are plenty of Bible-believing pastors who join me in doing that. If I'm the only church that's doing that, and we're the only one that's right and everybody's wrong, I encourage you to please leave this church, all right? I'm Jim Jones, the cult leader, all right? We're all around the world. We're all around the world, Bible believers. And because we believe in spreading out, that's why a lot of us are small in local area, because we believe in spreading out. So we see right here that's got to be a multitude of counselors. Why? Because go to 1 Kings now. Go to 1 Kings. Who are your counselors? Oh, it's my friend. That's not a good move. Look at 1 Kings. Look at 1 Kings. You know how it became a ruckus sometimes on the internet over a silly, petty issue? Because you got together with your friends, your buddies. And you know what? That's not the right... That's not the right group to get together with as your witness and counselor. It's going to fall apart. Look at the book of 1 Kings, and we'll look at 1 Kings chapter 11. We're going to look at 1 Kings chapter 11, uh, chapter 12. Chapter 12, look at 1 Kings chapter 12 and verse 6. 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 6. This is a good verse for you. You know what you need? Experienced people experienced people That's right. so some of you did not come up against some wrong pastor on your own in solo mission you actually had experienced people who helped you out now look at first Kings chapter 12 and we will read verse 6 and King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived see that these are people who had experience and they did it for many years. They're old. How do ye advise that I may answer this people? And they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day, and wilt serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. But he what? Forsook the counsel of the old men, which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, and which stood before him. See that? He now turns to the counsel of the young men. And he forsook the counsel of the experienced people. What happened after that? 9, 10, and 11, he went the opposite counsel by his buddies. And then verse 16, all Israel did not listen to the king. That's why, why is it you can't build a church except an internet thing? Why is it that, you don't, uh, that you're all alone and nobody's your friend in your local area? Because that's the same thing as verse 16. Real life common people don't want to believe you, think you're strange, you isolate yourself from all of them. Why? Because you went by your own arrogant counsel and you got your buddies together to help you out with that. Those kind of people should be totally rejected. If you reject Pastor Kim because of those kind of people, uh, you're in bad company. That's not good. That's not really good. If I do that, you all are in bad company and you should leave this church. So that's how you deal with heresy. That's how you deal with pastors who have problems, is that this is how it's supposed to be done. In verses 6 through, we see up to verse 16. Now, how do I deal with it? Look at Romans 1, Romans 1. Romans chapter 1. Shouldn't I defend myself? Shouldn't I stand up to myself when these people try to prove me a heretic and stuff like that? Well, the thing is this, is that why should I bother? If they fail to follow these. If they fail to follow these things, what good is it that I defended myself if they fail to follow these spiritual instructions? They did not prove me to be a heretic rightly. You know what they did? All they did was go by their own flesh and they went the opposite of these instructions on how they should deal. So then why would I deal with those kind of people who fail to follow this instruction from the Lord then? They didn't prove me to be a heretic then. Look at this passage, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. You know why I shouldn't deal with that? Because it's debate. Look at verse 29. Being filled with all what? 
unrighteousness, fornication and wickedness. See, that's not good. Covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy. Murder, what? Debate. See that? Debate. Because why? Verse 31, without understanding. So the reason why I refuse to deal with that is because if you do debate, didn't you know debate is a sin? Hey, is that what the Bible says in Romans 1? Yeah, Romans 1, debate is a sin. What in context concerning a debate? Does that mean I, uh, I'm afraid to challenge these other heretics and stuff like that? No, if I do that, then I can do that. I don't mind about that. But the thing is this, in context, what is this debate? It's going back and forth where it's pointless. You see that? Going back and forth where it's pointless. Because if you have like, uh, if I posted videos, defend, uh, hurling video at my enemy out there, what do you think that enemy is going to do? They're going to hurl a video at me. Then what am I going to do? I'm going to hurl a video. And what are they going to do? They're going to hurl a video. And if I have five other people to deal with, what am I spending my time on as a Bible-believing pastor? Hurling videos right. on people, and a lot of them are actually losers, and they depend on the internet to build a ministry. Why do I waste time on that rather than my own personal problems I have to deal with in life? People in this church I have to disciple, and then street preaching, visitation, souls to lead to Jesus Christ. And not only that, people online will be sick and tired of seeing a circus of people arguing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth Amen. about all this kind of stuff. And they're like, when are you going to teach me the Bible, Pastor? Amen. Amen. See, what's the pastor's job? To debate or to teach the Bible? Yeah, see that? See that? I'm too busy teaching the Bible. So I'm going to post those videos. I'm going to do that in this church, not hurl videos. That was years ago. I was ready to just tackle some people when they posted videos against me. And I was ready. I had the notes and all that ready. But then I thought about the members in my church. And when I thought about the members in my church, and then I was like, you know, if I keep teaching them this person's name, that person's name, this person's name, and that other person's name every time, then the member's going to think, oh, man, when I come to church, pastor's going to cover that person again. See that? So I'm, I refuse to do that. I, re I believe in rebuking false prophets, but it's done through this, through these steps, and also... When it's done through these steps, there's a difference, a difference with rebuking and debating. See that? When there's that difference. Rebuking is if someone does something wrong, I'll teach it and I'll expose it. Debating is going back and forth, back and forth like a carnival circus monkey. I refuse to make myself look like that. You guys can embarrass yourself. I ain't going to embarrass myself doing that. So then, oh man, but pastor, uh, I want the truth. How am I going to know the truth unless you post a video? Hey, 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 I mean, what in the world? I'm going to put an email, bling, like that. SJBBC at BBCInternational.org. Why don't you email me? I've already had people saying, can you answer this problem here? Because I'm having trouble right here and I'm confused. And then you know what I did? I just emailed back. And those people are my witness that I give a very thorough answer. See? Why? Because what's my goal? Not to tackle my... The guy who's uh, rubbing dirt on me is to show truth to the person who's deceived by that. All right? I lose my objective there. Just email me. I mean, look, look at Acts. Okay, go to Acts 17. Acts 17. Come on, people. Come on. Well, I don't want to do that. I, I think that if you did a video, that would be better. You see that? That's why this is important that I want you all to hear. Do you know why so many people are deceived and don't have the truth? They want fleshy convenient means to get the truth. This is an extremely important lesson I want you all to learn. Did you hear what I just said? When people want the truth, they want a fleshy, convenient mean to get the truth. If you're unwilling to sacrifice, that ain't even a sacrifice, just email me, okay? If you're unwilling to go through that, then God won't give you the truth. If you avoid the truth because, oh, pastor was uh, too mean and too sarcastic and, oh, he's young and who does he think he is? He's arrogant and stuff like that. God doesn't give you the truth. You know why? A person who wants the truth, you know what a person will do if he wants the truth? He won't care how it, the delivery is made or what he has to do. If he wants the truth that bad, he'll get it no matter what. 
Now, you people online got to ask yourself that question. Do you really want the truth that bad? We're going to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. And then we'll see what the scriptures read right here. Acts chapter 17. And notice what the Word of God says. We will read in verse 10. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Now pay attention to this, okay? Why did Paul, why was Paul able to deal with them than those in Thessalonica? Look back at Thessalonica, okay? What happened with Paul? Look at this. Verse 1. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollon Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was the synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reason reasoned with them out of the scriptures, open and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. Now notice right here that he was reasoning them for three Sabbath days. See that? So that wasn't just one time that was it. It went for quite a while. But then did that work? Verse 5, they still moved with MV, and then they wanted to kick him out. See that? What good is it if I demolish the enemy? If a person doesn't want the truth, it doesn't matter how persuasive my argument is. They're not going to listen. But if those that are soft-hearted really saying, you know, uh, I'm not saying Pastor Kim is wrong. He might have an answer, all right? So I'm going to ask him this question because I am confused. That kind of heart, then you will listen. If you don't have that kind of heart and you say, oh, Pastor Kim's a heretic. And you know what? I'm going to email him saying that he is a heretic and saying that he's got to repent of that. I ain't going to answer you because you already made up your mind. See that? And I'm wasting my time on people who already made up their mind rather than people who are waiting for me to answer their phone calls to return their emails uh, for members who are saying, when are you going to disciple me and stuff like that. Look at verse 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Why? This has got to be your heart. In that they received the word with all what? Readiness of mind. Unless you have the open heartedness, not a biased, closed minded, oh, he's wrong like that. No, if you're like readiness of mind, you know, he might have something in scripture that might be right. If you have that, I'm not telling you to believe me, but if you at least have that readiness, see that? Then what do you do? You don't believe me. You look at the next part. And what? Search the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. And what you do is you start to look at the scriptures. See? But guess what? When the scriptures are shown, it's by what? It's by uh, verse 10, the preacher telling you the verses. You're not going to know the truth unless you have Pastor Kim communicating with you. So if you can't give me the chance to, email, uh, to reply why that, that video or those heretical things were wrong, then, you know, don't blame me, see, that you rejected the truth. You won't give me that chance to show it to you, especially with readiness of mind, and you're not going to search the scriptures. Sometimes I wonder, you people, if I posted a verse, did you really look at that verse? Or did you just look at Pastor Kim's explanation? Oh, so then you're trusting Pastor Kim's explanation, not the Bible? Some, of, some people are too lazy to just look at that verse reference. They'll just say, oh, okay, whatever he yeah, says at the verse. See, that's why you're not going to believe me. You can't believe how, what Pastor Kim says. You're going to believe me when you start looking at the book. When you look at the book, then you're going to say, oh, okay, now I see why he says it that way. That's what's going to happen. So that's the reaction that you people got to do. So how do you prove Gene Kim's a heretic, and how do you unsubscribe from him? Did you, did you do this first? Did you actually had these, uh, who was it that led you astray, huh? It's not this kind of people, are they? Oh, he is a pastor. Okay, if he's a pastor, how many pastors agree with him? What, less than 20 churches in all the world? That's a weird guy, don't you think? So, what do you do? Are you fooled by these people? If not, then... Uh, did you at least give me the chance at Acts chapter 17? Did you? You did it. Readiness of mind to ask. Ready to ask. 
in mind, open-heartedness. See, you've got to be open-minded, not closed-minded. Oh, he's wrong. If you do that, then I can't help you, see? Only open-minded people God can use. You know why? Because when God planted the seed of the Word of God, which ground re received it? Those that were, sh those ground that was soft, willing to receive the seed. Not those that are closed and already rejected. See that? Ready task, open-mindedness and search the scripture. <clears throat> By the way, another thing is this. Did you actually look at all my other videos in giving the explanation? See, some people don't want to search. They want a convenient answer from pastor immediately. How do you know God does not want that? God wants you to start searching. God wants you to seek wisdom as if it was gold, the Bible says at the book of Proverbs. you got to search for wisdom as if it was gold. There are videos out there, but, and all you had to do was go to our YouTube channel, and in the search engine, just type a title there. If you type the title there, you may have hit one of those videos and give it a watch. So the thing is, is that people don't search, they don't look. And that's why... The Lord allows the deceivers to steal those people to avoid the truth and they leave Bible-believing truth and they, God allows them to be swooned and carried away by heretics. So that's a big warning. I don't want people to end up like that. What do I do about all this if they steal it? I can't worry about that. You know why? The reason why is God takes care of them. Romans chapter 12. The enemies of the Lord, the Lord will take care of them, and I don't have to worry. What did the book of 2 John say about this person who caused problems in the church? John says, Diotrephes, that guy, the Lord will render him according to his works. So those heretics out there who are trying to hurt the sheep that I'm trying to help out there, and I try to get them out of that gunk and try to save them the problem after years of searching, and then you get them back in that gutter, the Lord's going to render you according to your evil deeds, and I do not appreciate what you guys do. That's why uh, I do get angry. I do get angry. If you want to see what makes Pastor Kim ticked off, it's false prophets who have hurt those souls with deception. That's what you do to make me ticked off. As far as fleshy, uh, as far as personal tarnishment, etc., personal attacks and stuff like that, I don't, you know, God can handle them. I don't make a big deal about that, see. So when you hurt the sheep, that makes me upset. But I'm not going to seek vengeance out of my own flesh. I know the Lord will take care of you. You know why? If you are what you think, you think you're a pastor to take care of sheep, you know what the Bible says in the book of James? Be not ye many masters, because ye shall receive greater condemnation. I'm not worried about myself. I'm worried about you.